I'm Kathy, the Adult Services Librarian at the Waynesville Library. We're here in the kitchen at the Waynesville Library. And I'm going to be making a candy roaster pie. This is the last in this series that I've done, a seven part series of local delights. And last uh, video that I made, I also used a candy roaster squash. And we made the Three Sisters stew. So today I want to show you how to make a candy roaster pie um, similar to pumpkin pie, only the spices are different. Uh, it tastes a little bit more like a vanilla custard pie and it's um, really delicious. So um, what I, first thing I want to show you is there's two ways to get your uh, squash uh, puree. Um, you can bake it like this. This was 375 oven for about an hour and then you just scrape the flesh out. If it's dry like this, you don't need to drain it. I've got some already prepped right here. I drained this overnight in cheesecloth over a bowl that you just set in the fridge and just throw the liquid out. Um, the drier the puree is, the better the texture of your pie. So what we're going to need for this pie is um, puree of kabocha squash or candy roaster. In this case, it's candy roaster. Uh, some melted butter, three tablespoons, some vanilla. Um, you'll notice uh, I got a big jug of Mexican vanilla here um, because Madagascar vanilla is crazy expensive right now and I'm finding that I really like this Mexican vanilla. Um, I got it um, at the Mexican tienda down the road. So give it a try if uh, you don't want to spend 20 or 30 dollars on a little bottle of vanilla. A half cup of sugar, a little bit of flour, and some evaporated milk. Not sweet and condensed, just evaporated milk. Uh, the recipe will be on the webpage with all the quantities. So I'm just going to mix all this together, um, and, and I'm going to use an immersion blender um, just because here at work I don't have a, a mixer, but, and you can do it by hand if you want. Um, I do the puree first, and then the milk to kind of thin it out. One thing you don't want to do is um, add your flour all at once, just dump it in because then you can end up with lumps. So, got that mixed up. I might not even need the immersion blender today. Um, we'll see. Uh, two eggs that I just mixed up with a fork. I've never actually done this by hand. I usually use a mixer, so today will be a good test to see if it can be done just with a wooden spoon. We need one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, and that might sound like a lot, but um, there's not a lot of other flavorings in this pie, so you want to make sure that you use um, all of that vanilla, even if it sounds like it's going to be a little bit much. Yeah, it's mixing up really well. I think maybe we won't even need the immersion blender, which is nice, right? One less thing to clean. Um, half a cup of sugar, just use uh, plain old white sugar. You can see the texture of it. It's really bright, isn't it? That squash is a, such a pretty color. All right, so here's what we're gonna do with the flour. Instead of just dumping it in, this is three tablespoons, I'm just gonna sprinkle it. And this will keep us from getting a bunch of lumps in here. Three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And then the last thing we'll have to add is some butter. Let me check over my recipe and make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm using, you can use uh, whatever your favorite pie crust is. You can make one from scratch if you like. And sometimes I do that, but today I'm just using one of those Pillsbury um, crust that you just roll out. And I don't consider that cheating when people call using shortcuts cheating, I think. Uh, you're setting the rules for yourself, so of course it's not cheating if you want to save a little bit of time. And the store-bought pie crust tastes a lot better now than they ever did before. Um, so we're going to add our butter. And then once we get this into the crust, we're going to bake it in a 375 oven for about 50 minutes. Um, and I'll show you a couple little tricks on 
how to get the uh, edge of your pie crust to look nice and real simple little things. Um, so I'm not going to use the immersion blender, which is great. I did not realize that it would come together so well not using a mixer. Okay, so that's great. So this is a Pillsbury crust. You just kind of lay it in your pan like this. And then um, there's a couple different things you can do for the edging. You can trim all this off and then cut little shapes out of that pie crust, like little circles or little leaves. Um, another thing you can do is use your spoon and press a few indentations like that. And when you go all the way around, just remove this inner piece right here. And you'll have a scallop all the way around. So that's one way. Another way is to make like a, called a basket weave. Just take your fork and go like that. And then also go back over it like that just to make those little hash marks. Another thing that you can do is you can cut your crust like this in little pieces and roll them in like that. I actually might be able to do it just with my hands. Let me give that a try, yeah. Just roll it in like that. Another way is to Use your finger as a stop and just push the crust around it like that. Lots of different things that you can do. Um, and then just cut the excess off around the edge. Um, you do not have to blind bake this crust, so don't um, cook it ahead of time. There's no need for that because it cooks in the oven for so long. So. Um, make sure that you don't use a really big pie plate for this because um, otherwise you'll end up with uh, too shallow of a pie. So this one is perfect. So, here's our beautiful squash puree. Um, I'm going to trim all this around, put it in the oven, and uh, we'll check back in about 50 minutes to see what it looks like. And we're back. It's been about 45 minutes and the pie looks beautiful, so it's ready to come out. So, we're going to let this cool completely before we cut into it. But, look at that. Isn't that pretty? It does look like a pumpkin pie, but it tastes quite different, so you got to give it a try. Um, and if you'd like the written instructions for this, the recipe, just uh, take a look at the library's webpage. And if you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to email. Thanks for watching. And if this video has inspired you to make some pies, why don't you check out some of these books we have. The first one is When Pies Fly, which is savory and sweet pies. Uh, the America's Test Kitchen Perfect Pie is the ultimate guide to making sweet and savory pies. The book on pie, everything you need to know to bake perfect pies, and last but not least, The Art of the Pie, A Practical Guide to Homemade Crust Fillings and Life. All of these are beautiful books. Check them out.